Good morning, everybody. This is Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. I made it to porch time. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, you know what? It turned off cold. It turned off like in the low 40s this morning. It's been in the 80s and 90 degree heat indexes, and all of a sudden it just plunged into the low 40s. And the humidity is high, so it makes it cold. Um, but yeah, we're at that part of the season again where. It's time to come to the garden. Look at this. We're picking little marble English peas this morning. Guys, this is the exciting time of the year for us. The fruits of our labor are finally coming in. We'll be able to, uh, to do some canning, get some English peas put up. We're excited about that. And you know, lots of people come to the garden and they just automatically just start picking and just go through. We are a little bit different. As we pick, we weed. And it takes a little longer to pick that way, but once you keep your garden kind of clean like that, it just gets to be a routine. As you're picking and you see a weed right there, you just go ahead and, you know, you just pull the weeds out like these little weeds here. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. It makes the garden function and produce like that a little bit better but I'm on uh, porch time today you know guys we're we're talking about working in the garden and this is something that these were all sheltered in place I've noticed on YouTube lots of people I mean literally lots of people are doing gardens now and I kind of got this feeling that it's not so much about sustainability for a lot of people as it is about they just want something to do because they're so used to going to work, they're so used to doing something that they're just bored. And, and I hope that's not the case with, with you. I hope that you're actually doing it because you want to be able to have food because that's the whole, that's the whole purpose behind gardening is to be more sustainable and not have to depend on the grocery store for everything. Because guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. In my mind, I'm trying to work out how do you turn an economy back on when you've turned it off and scared everybody half to death that they're gonna die from a virus. How can anybody trust anything anymore? That's where I'm at. I can't see this economy just bouncing right back because people is going to have in the backs of their mind COVID-19. It's not going to go away. It's a virus. I mean, anytime a virus ever starts, it, it, it lasts forever. I mean, COVID-19 is now out there. It's going to be here forever. It's never going to go away. And it's always going to be in the back of your mind. Am I going to get this? Now understand there's a difference between COVID-19 and the coronavirus. The coronavirus is just does have flu-like symptoms and it has a lot of the same things that COVID-19 has. COVID-19 has a sequence that's completely different. It is very life-threatening and that's the one that they're looking for. Lots of people that go in and test and they go, oh yeah, you got coronavirus. One has got family members. It's got the coronavirus in a couple of weeks are over. I mean, they're getting better and everything's, you know, don't seem to be too bad. But those who end up with COVID-19, they're the ones that end up going in the hospital, end up on respirators and ventilators, and a lot of them end up passing away uh, because it's a total different virus. Even though they both have the same qualities, that's what I'm finding out through doing some research. And guys, stay sheltered in place. As I continue to work here in the garden, um, I want to take and try to get some of this done before the heat gets back in here. We've got a lot of rain coming tonight. We've got this cold air plunge down in here. And we don't want to be sick. We don't want to be out in the cold and the wet and end up in getting sick and, you know, possibly ended up with this virus or something. So we're going to continue to pick along here and hope that uh, hope that we can have a good harvest today. So I got to get busy. Miss one is passing me up back here, and I'm going to see if I can't get a few beans picked. 
Okay, my friends, we uh, shut the camera off for a minute because we realized, see all the weeds down through yonder in the middle of this row? It took like 45 minutes to go down through there. I, uh, I had just too much camera time. But you know what? I don't mind pulling the weeds out of my garden um, because that's the way it's supposed to be. People have always weeded their whole life. Uh, the new way of gardening saying you don't want any weeds is almost impossible. Now you can minimize it. We have these row covers down from Grower Solutions. Uh, that's been a, been a lifesaver for Wanda and me because we were constantly having to plow and stuff. And, and when you got English peas up on trellises, you know, you can't get in here and plow. Now if we had a, we, we, I, I have a small tiller, I could go down the middle, <clears throat> but if I don't have to, I don't want to. But I don't mind pulling a few weeds out from around my plants while I'm going. Um, and my daddy always told me, son, gardening is a lot like life. You get out of it what you put into it. And if you try to skimp on your garden, you're going to get a minimal amount of anything. Uh, he would, <laughs> I have to, say this about my dad. My dad would laugh at me because I tried to organic garden. I was a commercial gardener for a while and I grew a lot of stuff and I, and I switched over to trying to do organic and my daddy would, he would just laugh at me. And it's mainly because, uh, mainly because daddy just didn't understand what's going on with the world today. Daddy was still old school. Daddy used like, uh, when it comes to fertilizing his fields, my daddy would put out five to six hundred pounds of triple 13 per acre. And the man raised a lot of food. Now when he picked a row of something, he had food and lots of it. And I told him, I says, Daddy, I'm trying to organically do this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold back and you know, just use organic fertilizers, and he'd laugh at my quantity versus his quantity, and he'd go, son, you're just spinning your wheels. You're wasting your time. And and based on quantity of food that I got out of it, and even quality, yeah, he was right. But I tried to explain to my father, because see, dad was old school. I tried to tell him, Daddy, I can't put five and six hundred pounds of triple thirteen to my garden anymore. He's like, well, why not? I told him, I said, Dad, the fertilizers today are mostly salt. They got lots of salt in them. And he said, salt? He said, why would anybody put salt in fertilizer? And I told him, I said, that's just it. The fertilizer you grew up using, the old Black Joe and all these type fertilizers, Daddy, they didn't have salt in them. The fillers that was in those fertilizers was animal waste and stuff like that. I said, it was just good, solid fertilizer. It was good for the soil. And I said, this bag of fertilizer we got now, I said, it's got a lot of salt in it. And I got to watch my salt content in the ground when I use it. I can't over salt my ground. He said, well, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of putting salt in anything. And, and, and dad was old school. He didn't understand how that our agriculture department really don't want us growing food. They're more about the almighty dollar than they are about our food production and the health and, the, and of our plants and our land and our soil. Because dad would tell me that the government used to pay them to plant peanuts to put nitrogen back in the soil. They weren't interested in harvesting them. They just plow, plant them and plow them under to re Furbish the soil with good stuff. He said, that's what the government does in agriculture. I said, not anymore, Daddy. Well, fast forward to where we're at today. The garden is still about you get out of it what you put into it. Now, I use a lot of organic matter in my gardens. We have, if y'all watched our earlier videos, I show you our trash piles we push up on our property from limbs and trees and stuff and I let it all rot and then I go in with my bucket and I dig it all up and I bring it out here and I spread it on the garden. We take the roots and the pieces of wood out of it and go put it back into another pile and let it keep decomposing. And I do use some commercial fertilizer, but very minimal amounts because uh, after talking to some people who actually do plant science and stuff like that, they've told me, Danny, 
the plant doesn't know the difference between commercial or organic. It just knows if the nutrition's there or not. So just be careful with the salt content, which I already knew that. So because Wanda and I have seven gardens that average a quarter to a half an acre each, we have to use commercial fertilizer. And I do have cows and I have stalls and barns and chicken pens and all that, and I make that into my compost pile. That's what I use in my containers, and I'll put some down the rows whenever we're uh, first tilling in, stuff like that, but I don't have enough to do everything with. So we have to do it that way. So gardening is a lot like life. Life is the same way. You get out of it what you put into it. If you dread gardening, and it's a drudgery to you, your garden will never be anything to you other than a drudgery. It must be a labor of love. We are what we eat. If you eat junk, then you will be a junk food junkie. If you eat store-bought food all the time, your health will deteriorate. I mean, it's, we might as well accept it. Your health is going to deteriorate more rapidly than someone who grows their own food. If you grow your own food and you nourish it and you baby it and you take care of it and you do the best you can do with it, when you sit down to eat a meal, you're not going to be scraping food off into a garbage can because to you, that's wasteful. You had to grow it. You had to work. You, you put your life into it. You're not going to be scraping it off into a garbage can. As a society today, all I see is people, I mean, I was in the construction business for 26 years. I put in more garbage disposals, and I'd ask them, I'd say, why do you want a garbage disposal? Well, you got to have something to rake all that food off in. I'm like, and that would just floor me. I'm like, really? You're raking that much food down a garbage disposal? You know, they said, well, you know, you put something on somebody's plate, they don't eat it. I'm like, no, if you put it on a plate, you eat it. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. That's the way I was raised. You don't have a choice with a kid, as a kid growing up. When mom and daddy put something in front of you, you eat it. And you learn to like it. Because kids left to themselves don't have the ability to know what's right. They have to be taught. And... The palate of the mouth has to be trained as to what's good. I actually have some people who've came over before and eat my green beans and say, oh my gosh, I can't eat those. I'm like, why? They say, well, they don't taste like the ones that come out of a can. That's what I'm used to. I said, <laughs> I told them, I said the stuff that comes out of a can tastes like crap. Well, that's what I'm used to. This tastes totally different. I'm like, yeah, it's because it's real. It hasn't been irradiated. It still has the enzymes in it. It's like a real food. It's healthy for you. I'm sorry, you know, I, that's, it would take me some time to acquire a taste for that. I'm like, wow. You know, it just blows my mind that, that people have to acquire a taste for fresh food because they're so out of touch with life and reality of gardening and food, they don't even know what it really is supposed to taste like. So you get out of it what you put into it. Life is the same way. You know, it, everything about our life is like that. If you, all you want to do is sit on the couch and, and watch TV all the time, that's all you'll ever be. You'll never have anything. You'll always just be a couch potato. But if you're up at daylight, as soon as that sun, like right now, it's just starting to hit me right here, just coming over these trees right here, it's just now a little after seven. If you're not out at that time of the morning functioning and going and going, you know, you know the old expression, the early bird gives a worm? There's a reason for that. The birds that survive and are the healthy birds are the ones that are out there at daylight. They're looking for their meal right at daylight. Those are the ones who succeed. Go out and study the history of the presidents of the United States and you'll find out that most of them will tell you, I'm up at the crack of day, before daylight. I'm either reading my Bible or I'm actively getting ready for the day. Uh, you don't hear a president say, well, I slept until 9 o'clock today, you know? No. They are the kind of people who are up and out. All your people who are extremely wealthy people, or a lot of times, unless it was just handed to them, if they kind of had to work for it, they were out at the crack of dawn getting stuff done.
I was taught and trained by several millionaires who, who trained me in business. And that was their first thing. When that sun, when that daylight, when you can see the ground, you better, your feet better be moving. Now, not, not only them, my daddy taught me the same way. My daddy had a saying. We go to work when it's daylight enough to see how. We eat when we get hungry. And any fool can tell when dark comes. Now, that was my dad's saying. That's the way my daddy worked us our whole life. And it's become who I am today. My dad would always tell me, son, we're a machine. You just keep going. You just keep going. You just keep going. You train your body to go, go, go. He says that way you'll have the stamina that it takes to make it through life and to make it through the events in life and to be able to work and carry on and run and not get weary like the Bible says in Isaiah. We'll mount up wings like eagles. We'll run. We'll be, not be tired. All these kind of things. Dad would always tell me, son, these are the kind of things you want to do with your life. He said, get wisdom. He said, because wisdom is more precious than anything in this world. Wisdom will, will surpass money and everything. Learn, son. Learn all you can learn. So you get out of life what you put into it. Gardens are the same way. Now, we finished up these English peas. We're fixing to move to the front garden. We're going to check the English peas up there and see how they've done. we got two rows here. We've got two rows up there. This is an experiment this year to see which one does the best. They're in two different locations. One gets the morning sun, one gets the evening sun. We're looking to see which one gives the best, which one produces the most food for us. Because you know what? You get out of it what you put into it. Might I add... Now this is a this is a two gallon pail. We got a two gallon pail here, probably three quarters of the way full. Ms. Wanda got two big cucumbers here. So we're gonna move to the front garden. We're gonna check out and see about what we harvest from it. Okay guys, we're in the front garden now. We are trying to actively get through with them picking our English peas here, mainly because our hands you can't even feel them. They're just gosh. The older you get, you get you lose your feeling in your hands. And uh we want to see, like I said in the other garden, is this garden going to do better? Now, one thing we've already learned, the cucumbers we planted in this garden aren't even holding a candle to the ones we planted over yonder. So the cucumbers we're learning, if they get the morning sun, they do way better than the ones that get the midday and evening sun. That's what this is all about. It's about learning. It's about figuring out what really works for productivity in the garden here because you know like you said you get out of it what you put into it and if you're not willing to do an experiment every so often and learn something you're never going to get anything out of anything if you always do the same thing over and over and over and expect the different results i mean you know that that's the old adage that's the difference between a genius and an idiot and so we are trying to constantly change things up here and some things we go back to, the old method is the best method. It does seem to work the best because it was tried and proven by people before us. But some things we're learning actually work better, like the row cover. If my daddy had, had this when he, for, when he was younger, oh my gosh. Now he did use it once he got older. Now he didn't use row cover, he used black plastic because I have a piece of equipment down here that my dad custom built to lay black plastic and drip irrigation down. In his latter years, when him and mom had the produce stand, and people learned that my dad was growing produce to sell to the local um, to local people, uh, they flocked in there because they knew my daddy and they knew him, how he was about growing food. And dad was just one of those kind. He put down the black plastic, he put the uh, drip irrigation under it, he hooked it all up, and yes, he still poured the fertilizer to it. And he literally made a lot of stuff. So guys, keep in mind that life is what you get, is what you put into it. You get out of it what you put into it. Gardening is the same way. And my thing for Porch Time today is to try to help you to understand that if you want something out of something, you got to be able to put something into it. Even a marriage. Marriage is like a bank account. You have to deposit into a bank account before you can draw out of it. A marriage is the same way. You have to deposit into your marriage before you can draw anything out of it. So keep those things in mind. And we're going to share, we're going to share a clip at the end here with you about how much we harvested. 
as to which garden was the best. So we're gonna get to picking and we'll show you the end. We're finished. It's in the mid 40s outside and the wind's up about 15 miles an hour. So Wanda and I decided to come over to the cabin. We were gonna build a fire, but we got in here and it was only 63 degrees inside the cabin. So that's comfortable for us. Yeah. We decided not to build a fire. Um, kind of get warmed up because our hands are so cold from those wet plants and the wind blowing and it cold. And coffee. And she's got her coffee, yeah, but the front garden we want to show y'all. The front garden we ended up with uh, this was a little over three quarters of a bucket. We almost made a full bucket on the front garden, so. We were surprised. We were really shocked. Yeah. Really shocked. So, the conclusion is that the evening sun on English peas makes more peas than the morning sun does. So we'll keep an eye on it throughout the remainder of the growing season just to see if that still holds true. But right now, guys, we're going to start shelling. And let me say something about English peas. There's lots of people, we call them English peas because we're from the south. Up north, y'all just call them peas. Green peas. Green peas. Down here, if we say peas, nobody thinks about English peas. They all think about field peas, cow peas, whatever you want to call them. Um, lots of people down here don't like these green peas or English peas. <laughs> lots of people I know everywhere don't like them. And there's a reason for that. English peas or one of those things that when you start picking them, your day stops unless there's an actual emergency that day. Your day stops right then because you've got to pick these things and when they come off of those vines, when you start shelling them, you got about 45 minutes to an hour to get them either in a freezer or start canning them. You ever notice how when you're in the field and you pop one of them open and you eat them, they're just like eating a piece of candy? But yet when you eat them, and they're canned, you go, oh my gosh, these things taste horrible. Well, there's a reason for that, and it's waiting too long and letting the sugars turn to starches. You can't just go out there and pick these things and bring them in and stick them in the refrigerator and say, I'll get to them later on today. Nope, you just ruined them if you do that. You can go online, you can look at videos, you can look at research from all these companies that grow these things to sell commercially. <clears throat> they got a man that goes to a field especially I've seen this in foreign countries, he'll go to a field and he, he times them from the time they get through picking these things till these beans get to the factory. They got a truck sitting there waiting and they time the amount of time it takes for these beans to get from the field to the factory and in a can because they know that the quality of their product determines how long it takes to get these things processed. The English peas, you get out of them what you put into them. If you don't want good tasting English peas and you let them wait before you get them processed, you're not going to get anything but just uh, just a bland tasting pea. But if you want really good tasting ones, the time you get through picking them like us, get busy, get them shelled, get them in the freezer or get them canned, whichever one you want. Now we put some of ours in the freezer and we can some of them because we like fresh English pea salads as well as canned English peas. And a lot of people have asked me in the past, Danny, what kind of pea is those little tiny peas that you get in this, like little lasseurs? They're all English peas. They're all green peas. They run them through a screen system and the little ones fall through the screens and that's what you're eating because they're just not mature yet. So, and don't wait till they're over mature to pick them either because if they're over mature, they're never going to be sweet. They're always going to be bitter. And when you go to plant a variety, Look at the seed that you're planting. If that seed is round and smooth, it's never going to be sweet. If that seed is all wrinkled up and just the more wrinkled up it is, the sweeter it's going to be. So keep those things in mind when you're planting them for this year. And some people's going to ask, I might as well take care of it now. Can we pick these immature and eat the hulls and all? I guess if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. I don't. Because I like the English peas. I don't care about the hulls. If I'm not a cow, uh, if I want to be able to eat hulls and all, I'll plant the snow peas or something like that. 
so I can eat the holes and all on them. But these are made for shelling peas. These are not made to eat the holes on. Uh, the holes, if you have goats or cows or anything like that, they love the holes when you get through. Thank you for joining us here on the porch time today. And remember, life is what you make of it. You get out of it what you put into it. Gardening is no different. So thank you guys for Deep South Homestead.